feel like people just kind of wait around for something to slap them on their face. This is your passion. That's yeah. how it works. You have to go out there, invest in yourself, and, uh, and try different things. Welcome back to Abundant Culture Podcast. Where we dissect the mindsets and tactics of the true beast of business. People like Gary V, Grant Cardone, and Warren Buffett. All to create a blueprint to experience life more abundantly. Did you reach your financial goal last year? If so, let's be honest, you could still do better. So we want to personally help you with that. 2020 is all about big goals. So this year, we are spreading even more abundance by giving out insights on money, wealth strategies, and resources in our current newsletter, Creating Abundance in 52 Weeks. Sign up now on our website at www.abundantculture.co slash newsletter. Again, that's www.abundantculture.co, that's C-O, slash newsletter. You don't want to miss out. Now, back to the episode. Hey, everybody, Joseph here. Welcome back to the Abundant Culture Podcast. We're so glad to have you back again this week. Today's episode is for all of my entrepreneurs interested in the self-care industry. Today's guest is a entrepreneur esthetician from Bulgaria that believes skincare is not just a luxury, but it is a lifestyle. And today we're going to talk about how she went from being new to this country and not even knowing English to having an amazing clientele base, which she grew from from zero to over 100 in only one year. So get ready to listen to and learn from our good friend, Nina Popova. So hi, Nina, and thank you again for coming on to the Abundant Culture Podcast. We are very glad to have you today, and it's going to be an exciting talk. You are the first esthetician that is on the Abundant Culture Podcast, so this is something totally new for everybody to hear about and learn all about. But before we get into the business side of things, can you go a little bit into your backstory? Like, how did you get into business? Um, Why'd you get into business? Hi, guys. Uh, Thank you for having me, first of all. Uh, Really nice to finally meet you and talk to you. Um, So, uh, my story and how it all started. Um, I feel like I was kind of drawn to skincare ever since I was a little girl. I come from a very creative family. My mom owns a crafted business and I would always draw and you know paint and do things like that. I actually had one of my paintings in a museum when I was maybe fourth grade. Yeah, so I was always Crazy. drawn and art and being creative and all of that. But as far as the skincare goes, I remember one um, New Year's Eve, I was with my best friend and uh, we decided to have a spa day and prepare for uh, the New Year's Eve. And we had this dry mud mask, the one that we mix with water and you apply all over your face and you can't move. And if you try to say something or smile, it crumbles and it's like it hurts. Um, it, it's so tight on your face. I don't even know if that was a good idea. <laughs> these are the things that I would do. I would always find a mask, like a peel off mask or, or a different lotion. And I would mash cucumbers and eggs and mayo and like all this thing. So basically, um, that was my first, that, that's what I can remember as far as starting, uh, having interest in skincare. And then after that, I had um, always had oily skin, so uh, it's a really big culture in my country, Bulgaria, to get monthly facials. Everyone gets them. They're very affordable. Um, So men, women, you know, like everyone gets facials basically on a monthly basis. So I would go in, and facials are not as pampering as they are here, uh, and things probably change now, but basically you go in, you have your blackheads and pimples extracted, and you uh, they would apply a mask and a lotion, and you're done. So that was the whole idea of a facial, but uh, uh, that, that was my first introduction to actually professional treatments, and then after that, 
I would have my eyebrows waxed and my upper lip and whatever, you know, everything. So um, I think back then uh, I just kind of, uh, it was not a decision. I didn't really decide, oh, this is what I want to do. Uh, it was more so a feeling and it was in the back of my head kind of like, okay, I really, this is something that I can see myself doing. I can't even explain it. So um, I came to the States about 17 years ago and uh, by myself to pursue the American dream. <laughs> Uh, I kind of felt like my country and my city was kind of like getting a little small for me. I am, I'm a big daydreamer. I love to dream. I love to imagine things. And I just kind of like, I felt like I can't dream. I can't really, I didn't see a lot of hope for my future uh, in my country, which is kind of sad. But anyway, so I came here to pursue my American dream. Um, and uh of course, I didn't have uh, the formal education here. I didn't know the language, and I had to kind of start from scratch from the very beginning. I only knew how to say thank you and please and hi, probably in English. So I had to learn English, and I worked in different uh, restaurants and bars. I um, somehow, it's a really long story, but somehow I got into someone. Um, gave me the advice to go into nail technician uh, program and get my nail technician license. So I decided to go and pursue my nail technician licensing uh, school. Um, and I actually went to Mario Tricosi. I finished uh, the school, I, I got my license. It was really easy. And uh, right away I got a job in a spa in the suburbs and I did nails for actually seven years. But, um, and I was really good at it. I had a lot of steady clients and followings, and uh, but it was really not my passion. I didn't feel passionate about it. It was kind of, okay, it comes easy to me. I can do it. It's in demand. It's always busy, and the money is not bad. Uh, I can make a living off of it, so why not? But um, I always knew that... Skincare is what I wanted to do, uh, or at least try. Uh, and so I decided, well, I would use my nail initial license to break into the industry and see, you know, how it goes and uh, all of that. Just kind of learn a little bit more of what it's like to work in a spa. And then as soon as I had the funds needed to enroll myself in a uh, institution school, I would just go and pursue that. So... And after that, maybe two year, two or three years after my uh, nail initial license, I decided and I, I kind of saved some money to go uh, and start my uh, beauty school. And I went to New York, New York Spa Institute in these plains. Uh, fast forward, I mean, it's a really long story. I basically, in the beginning, I felt, you, as, an, as a new institution, you kind of feel lost because... You're out in the real world and you have no idea what to do. You are yourself in a room, small room, dark room with a client. And um, you're not allowed to make mistakes anymore. And But it's kind of, you, can, you can't, it's unnatural not to make mistakes because you don't have guidance anymore. You have no one to... And actually, I asked a lot of institutions for, you know, like different tips and tricks and things like that. But no one wanted to share uh, their secrets. So it took me uh, probably, um, I would say, five or seven years to kind of, I was doing, I, I would do nails and, and then skincare. And, but I was, I'm such a perfectionist that I felt like I was not good enough. Uh, and I was always, I would feel nervous. Um, every time I had a Brazilian wax, I would freak out. And every time I had a, a, a you know, like eyebrow wax, I just kind of was like, my hands were shaking. I went through a period of time where I had a anxiety and panic attacks because of that, because it's actually, actually like stress that like you put on yourself. And, you, and especially as a, if you're a perfectionist, you're kind of really hard on yourself and you want to be perfect every time. 
so um, that was kind of really bumpy road for me uh, in my career. And uh, after that, I kind of got burned out from everything. And um, I worked in some unprofessional spots and places where I felt like I didn't know that this was the industry. I felt like I needed to lie people just in order to buy the product that I was not, I wasn't feeling passionate about. And I thought the product was not all that, but I had to sell. And I, I just felt disappointed from the whole industry uh, in general, because I felt like I don't want to lie to people. I want them to feel good. I want, I want to feel, I want to work with integrity and, um, I became a personal trainer and I took a break from, from the spa industry and I said to myself, well, you know, I love working out. I enjoy it. I prefer to spend my time in the gym than in the spa. So that must be my passion then, you know, and yeah. I went and I got a National Academy of Sports Medicine, one, one of the most uh, prestige personal training licenses out there. Basically, you can get a job anywhere. And so I got that and uh, and um, I went in an interview in a gym here in Chicago and I worked as a personal trainer for about six months. But I quickly discovered that uh, enjoying you know, working out and looking after your health and your body is so much different than teaching people and coaching people. And I literally hated it. <laughs> not what I want to do or not what I'm good at. So I decided that I wanted to go back to aesthetics, but this time I wanted to do it the right, the right way. Really interview the spots and the places that I wanted to work and the team that I wanted to join. And, and, um, and that was the approach I took. So I remember uh, booking, and I was really lucky because I guess right now, I just yesterday spoke with someone and she said, I, no one is hiring, I can't find a job. But at the time I was able to book about, well, uh, four or five interviews in one week. And I went to all of them. Some of them didn't call me back. Uh, but the one that I really wanted to work at uh, was a spa here in uh, River North Chicago. And it was kind of meant to be for me because I remember passing by that spa uh, one day and I said, it would be so cool to work here one day. And uh, I saw actually in Craigslist, I don't even know if that still, still exists, Craigslist, but I saw in Craigslist that they were hiring and I couldn't believe it. I called right away and I said, I want to work in your spa. <laughs> They're like, well, you have to you know, apply and go through the process and do you have a job? I said, yes, you do have a job. So they said, well, we prefer to give a chance to someone who is not employed at the moment, you know? Uh, and I said, I'm quitting my job. <laughs> I want to work in your spa. So they said, well, okay, uh, come in for an interview. So uh, they, I had three interviews with them. And finally, uh, so on the second interview, they offered me the position. And uh, then after that, I had a practical interview with them. And uh, I had a period of... Uh, three months, which was uh, kind of like a trial period, 90 days. I think every every business has that. So um, that was that. That was a really actually hard period of my life because um, I, so working in the spa industry, you get paid percentage. You don't get paid hourly. Uh, so they were paying me hourly until my percentage for my clients got greater than the hourly. Mm -hmm. So the first month, probably, I was broke as a joke. So I actually slept on the couch of one of my friends. So that's like 
uh, 10 years from coming in America and I'm almost homeless. I don't have a place to live. I sleep on my couch and, and I have no money in the bank. So I remember uh, I had a $10 tip from uh, one of my clients and I was just so like, uh, not desperate, but I was just so shaken from the whole experience. I, I knew that I would get to the point where I would start making decent money to create a lifestyle I'm living. But at the time I only had $10. So I decided to buy a bottle of wine <laughs> with the $10. Just Good like, investment. <laughs> not get drunk really, because you know, but it was just very soothing for me. I'm like, I just need that comfort from because yeah. I don't know what else to do. And then you wake up the next day and go ahead and do it all over again. So that was actually the um, turning point in my career where I was finally in a better space, better place in my life. I worked with a team of estheticians and I was able to exchange experience um, and I was able to kind of see like different points of view and, uh, you know, exchange a lot of knowledge and kind of brainstorm and what's good, what's not. And I gained a lot of experience as far as like, you know, waxing and doing all of the things. And they had a really cool goals type of like they, they would set up a goal for each quarter and you just kind of had to tap into your uh, competitive you know side if you have it and um, and 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 that was you know that that was a really cool experience where I feel like I learned the most um but also I learned and I saw things that I didn't want to do as far as business um so it was kind of, it was a nice mixture of the, of the two. And um, so that's basically my story as to how everything started. Uh, and, and then after that, obviously, is the time when I decided to go and uh, do this for myself. That's really That's, cool. That is. Um, so I think there is a lot to unpack there. Um, because so you walked us through um, kind of like your your life journey up until the, the point you're at right now. And um, one of the things I've noticed is that you you tried different things until you figured out what your passion was. And you talk about that all the time. Like we were just talking to my little sister yesterday and we're trying to get her some experience in something so she can figure out what she wants to do. Um, so I think that was one of the one of the good points. Um, just you know, do something until you like <laughs> until yes, you like what try you do. different things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, how would you know what your passion is? Yes. Yeah, that is so true. <laughs> because sometimes you feel like, oh, but I like cooking all day long, right? Mm -hmm. but that could be just like your, your hobby, but can you be a professional chef, right? Yeah. Right. You really want that. You have to go to school. You have to learn different things. So I feel like people just kind of wait around for something to slap them on their face. This is your passion. That's yeah. how it works. You have to go out there, invest in yourself, and uh, and try different things. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, have to put time in. Mm -hmm. And then um, another key point I took from your story was um, you said that when you started um, doing like the skincare esthetician, you didn't know what you were doing. And I think that that represents pretty much anybody in life. Um, it can reflect all different industries. Like nobody knows 100% what they're doing. But the fact that you continue to, um, you know, progress and, you know, move forward each day, learning new things, um, that's how you gain that experience. Like we were just listening to an interview by Ty Lopez and Tom Bouye. 
Bill, Billier, yeah. the, oh, with the impact theory. <laughs> impact theory, yes. Yeah. And in the interview, like um, Ty Lopez, he said like, you know, nobody knows what they're doing. Everybody's still trying to figure it out. Um, so I think that like little piece of advice could just go such a long way. Yeah, for sure. And you also touched on uh, like you you having to uh, come here and learn English. Like, how was that whole experience? Because I I never learned a second language, um, so like I don't know what that whole experience is like. Was it like hard? Did it take a very long time? Kind of tell us about, like the experience behind learning a whole new language, going to a new country that you've never been to before. Yes, so it, it was really interesting because I actually went to a local college here maybe six months after my arrival here in Chicago. I went to a college to sign up for continuing education. No, uh, what was that? Uh, English is a second language classes. And they had a written test that you had to take and place into a certain level. And I placed in level four, which is they only had five levels. I don't know how, it, like why, but I went for it. I said, well, I must be pretty good in English then. <laughs> but I knew nothing in English. So I went and I couldn't understand a thing. And it was so overwhelming and so frustrating for me. And um, I didn't have a car. I didn't know how to drive. It was, uh, um, it was in a kind of sketchy area of the city. And I had to go nighttime. And it was just not a good experience for me. And so I stopped going after maybe three or four classes. It was just not my thing. I mean, I was never actually, I mean, in school, I was always daydream. I just can't focus on one thing completely and fully. So, sure. Uh, I, at the time I worked in a, a restaurant slash bar, uh, and it was actually Bulgarian, but during the day we had a lot of American customers, right? So I needed to learn English. So the owner of the restaurant told me, you need to know, you need to learn English. There is no other way around it. So I would go, I remember I would have like 12, 13 hour shifts. And then after work, it was in the middle of the night, I would go at the place I was staying at the time in the beginning. And I would just uh, learn one word at a time. And I'll just write it down a hundred times until it stuck with me. So I used the old fashioned approach of just learning little words. And then after that, every each time I watch TV, I would watch it with, I would, you know, like have subtitles, mm -hmm. try and read whatever they were saying to kind of make the connection somehow. And I just put myself out there. The restaurant actually went, they bankrupt, or they had some family issues on, and so they closed the business. And I got a job as a uh, hostess in an Italian restaurant. So I was not surrounded by Bulgarian people anymore. So the only English I had to speak was in the only language was English that I had to speak at the time. So I had really, you know, I was, I was afraid to speak up and I was very shy. I'm naturally a very introverted person. So for me, it was so hard. I mean, I've had people telling me, oh, what are you doing here? Uh, you don't even speak English. You don't even understand what I have to say. And, you know, things like that, really bad experiences. But you, you kind of have to decide at some point of your life, like, okay, I don't care if I'm going to embarrass myself and I'm just going to speak up. The, the way I speak, the, you know, the things that I want to say, I'm just going to do it and go for it and that's it. So, so that's it. I mean, I just, I feel like... It's a still ongoing thing. I'm still learning. <laughs> like, I never went to school. So, yeah. So basically, you just have to immerse yourself in a language, mm -hmm. which I think is really cool because, yes. like, I just don't know how that will work out for me because I just like I, I tried to learn Spanish a couple times but I don't think I was like I, I really tried that hard either but it, was, it just never worked out <laughs> like yeah you just have to be in in the, the that culture and I I didn't have a plan B yeah. mm -hmm. which I had to speak was English so yeah yeah and how long did it take in total to 
get to a point where you could at least kind of understand people? Um, a couple of years, a few years. I mean, in the beginning, it was kind of, I couldn't understand, but I, I'm still learning. I would still ask, you know, people, what does that mean? What does that word mean? You know, and some people are actually really impressed by the fact that I know slang, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's a it's a very kind of conversational um, English, I guess. I, I feel like it's very basic, but it works for me as of right now. And eventually, I do want to go back to school and learn conversational uh, conversational English. And um, I mean, I write in English. I I at the moment I don't even know how to write in Bulgarian. I, wow go and fill out a paperwork in Bulgarian and I it, it was really difficult for me so I write in English I read in English you know all the books and everything and um, I don't I don't watch Bulgarian TV anymore everything's in English so yeah so do you think that experience helped you um, with starting up and running your esthetician business now um yes because you have to be outside of your natural environment uh in in order uh to evolve and grow i you know even going into the esthetician school we had a with in our theory classes we had to read off of the the book that they gave us so I was the only Bulgarian in, in the class. The majority of the people were uh, uh, American or, you know, from different countries, but they, they were fluent in English. So, you know, I had to read in English in front of 20 people. Um, so things like that is just like kind of like different challenges. But I feel like just like everything else, I always use the analogy because of my fitness background. You know, when you go to the gym and you want to grow your muscles, and we all not know that, right? So you have to break the fibers in order for them to get stronger and recover and grow. So same thing with us people. Like, yeah, I feel like we learn all, you know, every day. You just have to put yourself kind of in uncomfortable uh, situations. And, and that's how you learn new things, new skills, and you grow and you evolve. And, and, and that's how it's done. Mm, it for sure. Definitely. If I stay within my Bulgarian community, I would have never learned the, learned the language. I would have just, you know, be complacent. And uh, not that there's anything bad. I, I don't think that it's bad. I mean, everyone is different. But for me, that was still kind of not enough. I wanted to now I'm completely immersed in the in the culture here in the city. And uh, it's just been such a beautiful experience because I've met so many different people from different countries and uh, my knowledge of the world like extended so much. So definitely. That's awesome to just have that experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how does someone go about uh starting their own business in the esthetician industry um and also what like really um what does it mean to some to someone to be an esthetician as well can you kind of shed a little bit of light on that so uh how does someone go um uh, I don't know. Like, everyone has their own journey. I feel like, for me, I just felt like uh, I couldn't learn anything new at the spa that, you know, that was my dream that I would work there. But I was, I got to the point where I felt like I was just going to work. And I would wake up every day and go to work and... It, it was not challenging anymore. There was mm-hmm. nothing to do anymore. And I would do the same things repetitively. And, and that really uh, kind of depressed me. Like I felt depressed. Uh, yeah. And then I felt like I didn't have the freedom to be creative. And so um, I just, my main drive behind 
uh, starting a business was, I think, the my desire to be free. I just wanted to be free. I didn't want to work on someone else's time anymore. I didn't want to ask for permission. To I didn't. I, I just. Uh, I I just. I want to be creative. I want to be free. I want to change the products that I want to use if I wanted to. And you know, now my clients are. Uh, they're my boss. Like I joke about it. Yeah. You know. Uh, the only people that I have to kind of um, listen to and coordinate with are my clients. But anyway, so as an esthetician, you basically learn uh, skincare. You can treat acne. You can uh, uh, treat whatever you want, uh, whatever it is that uh, skin um, condition, right? So you treat uh, aging skin, acne, if someone suffers with some type of pigmentation. Um, you can primarily and only do waxing if you want to, if you're not really passionate about the skincare uh, part of it or facials. You can only do eyebrows if you wanted to and specialize in that. So I feel like the industry really changed and um, recently for the past couple of years because now um, you can just pick your what you're mostly passionate about and just do that and you know you don't really have to be esthetician but you can be just a brow specialist or you can be a waxer or you can be a facialist so that's really cool i currently do everything um uh, but i've my main focus right now is facials and facial massage because I feel like that's where I feel, that's where my, my true passion is. I love the facial massage and I love, um, it's kind of like, I love the, the uh, feedback that I get from my clients. Um, it's a little bit of like the ego thing probably, but, but I just, I just, that's, that's what I love doing. And, um, I actually sucked. I, I was so bad at doing eyebrows. I didn't know. I would freak out. I would see some of it like on my schedule for eyebrow wax and I would literally have anxiety attack because I felt like I didn't know what to do. Uh, I felt like there, there's got to be a better way of doing eyebrows. Uh, I, I felt lost. I knew what I was doing, but I didn't know why I was doing what I was doing. I don't know if it makes any sense. For, for example, if you do a facial, you know, you know all the steps, you know what to do, but you also understand why you're doing the things you do. With eyebrows, I was kind of like, I can wax the eyebrow, but like, I don't know why I would do this instead of that and how to change. If someone came to me with like butched eyebrows, I didn't know what to do. I was like, okay, so now what? I can just follow the damage. And that was all I could do. So I actually took so many online classes for eyebrows until I found finally master the skill and uh, the feedback was just so amazing um and you know now things are so much different i feel really confident with doing eyebrows and you know i have a great following of clients and all of that so for a while i thought that eyebrows was all that i was going to do but then you know the facials kind of took uh, like the first spot i guess of my <laughs> So now I'm like facials, facial massages, which is really big at the moment for me, and then eyebrows, and then the rest of the waxing services. Yes. Cool. So how often do you need to do like continued education? Um, one, to keep up with like your licenses, and then also just to like stay competitive like in the market. So in order to keep your license, you need to, every two years, you have to go in and, uh, and take continuing education classes. Um, 
I think we need 10 units or something like that every two years. And there is like a little small fee you have to pay. I think it was, I think it's each year or every two years. I don't even know. I just do it automatically now. Uh, so that's the requirement from the state board in order to keep your license. Um, then some people might think that that's enough, but for me, if you really want to separate yourself from from the crowd out there and from everyone else, I mean, think about it. There, I think recently because I, I do a little research now uh, from a new project, but. There are 50,000 new institutions graduating each year. 50,000. Wow. Like, <laughs> That's a lot. The percentage of how many of those, I think in my, from my class, uh, when I graduated, we were about 20 people. I think maybe only two of us are actual institutions now. Wow. And so people are just taking the courses and not even really doing anything with it. Well, they try, or, or maybe they, they can't get a job, or maybe they would get a job, but they think that that's not what it, they thought it would be. Mm-hmm. But, like I was, they don't feel uh, confident enough in their skills, but, you know, you just have to make all of the mistakes, and you have to learn, and you have to have, you, you need to have the drive to, to better yourself. And, and you need to be willing to invest in yourself. Uh, I I sacrificed a lot. Uh, you know, for a while, I didn't go out. I didn't spend money on going out and buying new clothes and going on vacation. Just recently, I took my first vacation. I don't, I don't even know how many years. Like, you just have to constantly, you have to keep investing in yourself and in your, you know, better in your skills. Otherwise, you're just going to be a mediocre and nobody wants to go to a mediocre institution. Mm-hmm. And, and honestly, or anyone mediocre, like, honestly, like, if, if your skin, skills are not to the point where they're like, wow, how can I get more of this? You're not even going to be able to charge enough i mean but in on average an institution here uh, in the states makes 38,000 a year like how is this enough to have a nice lifestyle it's not yeah, it's, not. <laughs> it's not enough nope. right so you have to find a way and have the desire to improve yourself and you know being a good institution or being good in every in every industry, it's not just about, of course, it's not just about the skills that you have, but also you have to work on yourself as a, as a person, right? So you, there is just so much that goes hand by hand. Um, really, it, it, you have to have the drive and desire to be the best uh, at what you do. Mm-hmm. Your yeah. best, you know, it's not necessarily competing with anyone else, but your best. Yeah. So what is some uh, like a skill that you would say separates a mediocre esthetician from somebody who is above average or extremely gifted as an esthetician? Is there any kind of underlying thing that might separate the two from each other? Um, experience. Uh, you just have to be patient and give it time. And you need to know that you might have the gift. Like, for example, people would always say, tell me, you have the touch. Like, you just have the touch. You know, I don't have the whatever slappy fishy hands or whatever you call it. <laughs> I have the right touch. So I have the gift. But you need that experience in order to feel more confident and um, so you, people need to be patient and give it time and realize that, you know, um, that's your journey. And I mean, even, even now, the point that I'm at right now, I'm kind of looking at the next step and I'm like, well, I need to improve myself and get to the next level. Right. So it's a constant thing that's going on. But basically, uh, what separate, separates you? You have to be... Um, so you can imagine, you work in small room, no windows, 
99% of the times, there is no windows in a institution room unless you're renting space with a big window or something like that. No windows, um, dark room all day long, eight to 10 hours a day. And you, uh, if, if you're a busy institution, you see anywhere between eight to 10 clients a day. So you have to have the love uh, and passion for in order to succeed and separate yourself from the mediocre. Because, I mean, I feel like you can just go to work um, and treat it as any nine to five job and go back home and go on with your life. Or you can just invest a little more passion into it and, and know that each and every person that comes to see you, you have the change, the chance to kind of um, make their day. Yeah. You know, even if it's with conversation or give them a compliment, you know, um, you can just make them feel better. Um, even with the facials, um, Sometimes there are no words needed. It's just the energy, yeah. just a caring touch. Like if they feel that you care about them, you listen to their needs and um, don't necessarily try to be like, no, this is what you need and that's what you need to buy. And while you're doing a facial, you think about what to sell to this client and how to upgrade the service and all of that takes away from their experience. Yeah. You know? So you really have to be very conscious about who is laying on your table. And it's a very intimate experience with touching the person. And you just have to be aware of your energy as well. You yeah. can't think, oh, I have to go to the grocery store after this and buy tomatoes. You can't <laughs> think about that you just have to be in the moment present and really take away take the um, attention from yourself and really uh, focus on your client so I think that you know even if you don't really uh, have the long years of experience or uh, the continuing education uh, or you don't have the uh, funds or finances to invest in your continuing education, at least try to be in the moment with your client and listen to their needs. And that would, that would make them come back for more. It's not about the product that you use. It's not about, you know, how much you know about skin and how much you know about ingredients. It's about the experience that you're providing for your clients. Yeah. I think that that's the main skill or thing that separates the, the you know, greatest addition from a, from a mediocre. Absolutely. I love it. So how did you grow from, I'm not sure if it was zero clients uh, quite there, but how did you grow to 100 clients in one year? Because that is, that, that's significant. Yeah. It's a lot. And I say no to a lot of people because early on, yeah. So when I, uh, I, I decided to go on my own uh, and start my business, uh, of course, I didn't know what I was doing, right? Just like we talked like not too long ago. Uh, so, but one thing I knew and I decided that I'm not going to compromise. It's basically like, okay, I work from nine until six. And that's it. I'm not going to go early or stay late for clients unless it's, it's absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to bend over backwards because you're setting yourself for um, kind of like a failure, if you will. You know, you, you can't uh, overextend and yourself. Um, you just have to create boundaries and and kind of uh, honor your own boundaries and, and and stay very disciplined so that was the the one decision that I made I'm not I just I will have my work days work hours and that's it outside of that you know especially if you have your own businesses 
you you have to wear you guys know you, you're wearing like five six hats you're every you're a cleaning person you're checking in checking out client in my you know in my case uh you have to do laundry fold laundries you know there's so much time management that's going on you have to build your own website build you know your own google page and yelp page and um and 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 run your instagram and social media i mean that's a full-time job in itself so yeah definitely (laughs) you know it's a lot and so i get the idea that uh i i feel like most of uh the institutions out there are just afraid to say no or charge the the or charge the price that they 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 feel like they deserve Mm. Decided that I'm not going to be that institution. I am not afraid to say no. And if that client really wants to come and see me, she will find the time and the day that she will come and see me. And I'm not going to bend over backwards and I'm going to charge the price that I feel that I deserve because of my long years of experience and uh, all the like thousands of dollars I spent on my education and improving my skills. Yeah. So kind of decided to value myself and honor myself and my boundaries. So that was the first thing that I did. And I feel like that was kind of like a winning decision for me um, because if you don't respect yourself, no one will respect you. And if you don't respect your time, you know, it's just kind of like it is what it is. Everyone will treat you that way because you don't respect yourself. So yeah. Um, I don't know. So that was the first thing. And I think it was like word of mouth, a lot of referrals. I never did uh, really discounts. Uh, I would give out discounts to friends and families and loyal clients that I feel like, you know, they deserve encouragement for their yeah. loyalty and I really appreciate them. But I, I didn't have, I think in the beginning I had like 10% uh, discount for some clients, but client, but I quickly kind of stepped out. You don't want to position yourself also as someone who gives out a lot of discounts because then you devalue yourself. So stay strong and, and really believe and trust that things are going to work out. And uh, you can't, if, if you give out a lot of discounts, that means you're kind of desperate, right? So stay busy. I just stayed busy all the time. If I, I if I wasn't booked, which I was not in the beginning, I had one client a day. Um, I would call my girlfriends and tell them, come, just come in and get a facial for free because I need to be doing. I need to stay busy. I need to do something. So uh, slowly, kind of, it, it, it kind of started paying off. I don't know, and like going back to. Uh, me really caring about my clients and just always striving to give them the best experience. Um, now I'm to the point where I don't really have to um, cold sell or hard sell to anyone. I don't. I don't even have to tell my clients when to for them like when to come back for the next facial. They're before they leave. They're like, how can I get on your schedule? How can I book my next appointment? What when do you want me to come back? I mean, I have clients who I see clients every few of my clients get facials every week. So that's amazing. You know, that is. Yeah, so uh, it's just uh, I put myself in the shoes of, uh, uh, of my clients and I kind of created the business that I wish it existed. Mm-hmm. And um, and I work in a, I rent out of a hair, hair salon. It's really busy hair salon in Gold Coast. But the feedback that I get from my clients is that even though they see how busy the salon is and how many people is out there, as soon as they walk in my room, they feel this like serenity and peace and quiet and it's very relaxing atmosphere. So I kind of, you know, it, it, it just, it took a long, long time. I mean, uh, it's been a year and a half now. And for the past, I would say one year, I, I, I see a lot of growth, you know, and my, actually, the 60% of my clients are repeating clients. 
at, at the time, which is, that's what you want. You don't, you know, you don't want to invest so much in, gain, in attracting new clients. You want to keep the clients that you have currently. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So did you do like to get the clients at first, um, were you doing anything? Like, did you have like an email list or, um, social media marketing or like what did you do to attract uh the clients for them to be you know consistent clients with you or was it just from like word of mouth so to gain uh in the beginning because right now i have a repeating business and basically my business takes care of itself like my clients refer me and every new client is not someone all the new clients that I get right now, they know me. I don't necessarily know them, but they know me because they're referred to me from someone. So that's really nice. But in the very beginning, I used the uh, Instagram in my advantage. Uh, and so I didn't do paid ads or anything like that. I just kind of was very um, consistent with posting on Instagram. Cool. And- about behind the scenes and all of the treatments that I did and like I said I would call my girlfriends and say come in and get a facial and so you know like if someone is getting a free facial they don't mind being recorded or being you know like taking a photo or something like that so I would ask some of my actual clients to you know to take a photo of their eyebrows and before and after so I was really consistent and still I'm very consistent on uh, Instagram Mm -hmm. I think that that was the one thing that really helped me uh, build my business I got really some really good reviews on Yelp that was another thing. Um, I attracted a lot of new clients from Yelp because when people Google facial near me or waxing or eyebrows, I would come up with my reviews. Um, I had a referral program in the very beginning, maybe the, the first or the second month. Uh, it was refer a friend and you, bo- you would both get like 10% off or something like that. So I kept that for a little while and I did, I did get some referrals, but now it's just kind of word of mouth and, you know, even Instagram, even if someone uh, is not my client and let's say you mention, oh, I need a facial, I need to start taking care of my skin and start getting facial. Oh, you should go to Glow by Nina, you know, because people kind of know me already, like, um, in, in, in from Instagram, so so that's how I, I feel like that's how it all started, and, and now it's continuous. It's kind of like a snowball. So I don't have to do much now, but just stay consistent and keep improving myself. Obviously, for yeah. sure. Consistency is key, people. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so to start wrapping up, to start wrapping up, because we want to respect your time. Um, what is the number one takeaway that you like someone to get from this episode? Uh, number one takeaway, um, as far as like an advice or yeah, for new anything or for you know just people in general or yep, just anything you want anybody to take away from this episode. I would say uh, you know follow your dreams. You never stop dreaming and visualizing and um, just imagine yourself as the person you want to be in the future uh, and a reverse engineer. That works for me. It works really well, actually. Like, I would always imagine, like, I, you know, sometimes you don't know necessarily what it is that you want to do, but you know the person that you want to be, right? Yes. So how does that look like? How, you know, like... Just step into in in the shoes of your future self each and every day and reverse engineer and kind of like, okay, so the future, you know, Nina, what would she do on a daily basis? Like how, you know, how did she became that, you know, whatever it is that I envision for myself in the future And, and kind of leave it up to that as much as you can each and every day, you know, do the things like if Nina is healthy and vibrant and energized and she's uh, this 
you know, um, boss lady or professional or she carries herself with confidence and, you know, things like that. You kind of try to embody that every single day. You read the books that you need to read to improve your skills and better yourself. Uh, if you want to be, if you see yourself as a leader one day, you read the books in leadership and business and things like that, you know, just like always strive, like, that's what it is for me. Um, yeah, reverse engineering and, and you know, living up to my, my vision of myself. Um, yeah, never give up on your dreams. Um, make lists, create a vision board, like anything that it is. I mean, like, life is just so amazing and everyone goes through ups and downs and, you know, you have really low moments in your life uh, and you have really high moments in your life, but you kind of have to embrace both, I feel like, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and accept it as it is, that's what it is. And if you, you know, your goals and dreams change uh, constantly. Like now I'm in the process of creating something completely new for me and I have to adapt and adjust to that and learn the skills that I need to learn, you know? And it's like, don't, you just like leave room for flexibility, I feel like. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's great advice. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And since you're on the Abundant Culture podcast, we always have to ask our guests um, this same question. And it's because it's been so key in our lives, to be honest. And that question is, in your personal life or even in your business, how do you spread abundance? How do I spread abundance? Uh, well, right now, I am spreading abundance with um, like I mentioned, my new project, I'll shamelessly <laughs> talk about it here, but basically I want to help new estheticians um, better themselves. And I want to give them that blueprint and, um, you know, roadmap and shortcuts to success. So that's my way of spreading abundance. I feel like in my industry, uh, I want to help new institutions and even, you know, not so new institutions, but I just like, I really feel passionate about helping them um, and, you know, not go, like, I don't want them to go through what I went through. Yeah. Like, I don't want them, I don't want, like, it took me, 11 years to get to this point and it was not easy and you know uh so that's my way of spreading abundance and um in my personal life and just in general I just try to always I mean a lot of my clients even because I don't really have time for social life right now but that's my social life my clients yeah. mm -hmm human interaction uh they some of them come they they would come in for a facial just so they can talk to me you know mm -hmm. and i feel like people feel inspired because of the grit yeah you know and the persistence that i have and they see how i'm always kind of growing and trying to improve myself and so they would come in and for uh, inspirational treatment, right? So, Nina, tell me about your goals. Tell me how you, you know, how you achieve your goals or how you set your goals. So I feel like that's another way of spreading abundance is to- Oh yeah, for sure. Helping people. Definitely. <laughs> so <laughs> this was a great episode. It was super, um, what's the word I would use? Inspirational. Yeah, like yeah. inspirational. Yeah. Um, it really dove deep into like confidence. So this was a great episode. It it helps. I believe it could help a lot of people, especially with the mindsets and finding their passion um, just in general. So for the people that want to get into contact with you, maybe they, they want some inspirational treatment while they're getting a <laughs> facial or uh, maybe they are interested in becoming estheticians and they like to talk to you about your new project or um, anything, really. Um, how yeah. do they get into contact with you? So uh, people can find me on uh, Instagram. Uh, I'm Glow by Nina. 
So basically everywhere I'm Globe by Nina, uh, Facebook, Globe by Nina, Google, Yelp, uh, www.globalnina.com, uh, globalnina at yahoo.com, so they can find me uh, with Globalnina, uh, or um, Skin Lab Academy. So that's my newest uh, project. So I created this school for institutions that they can take their continuing education. I don't provide, I will not be providing uh, units, you know, the hours that they need um, every two years. But I will be providing a lot of education as far as uh, confidence boosting and improving your, you know, skills in the facial and how to give out that wow uh, experience to your clients and all of that. All the things that would make you better as an institution. So I'll have a lot of classes with that. So that's Skin, uh, Skin Lab Academy and Globe by Nina. That's how they can find me. Awesome. That is very awesome. Well, thank you again, Nina, for coming onto the podcast. This was this was great. Yeah. Thank you guys. I'm glad. <laughs> thank you. So that's all we have for today, folks. I hope you got as much value out of this as we did. Keep in mind, the only way we can improve is through constructive feedback. So remember to rate and review this episode. Also, you are not the only person that needs to know this super valuable information. So be sure to subscribe and share as well. Stay tuned for the next episode. And remember to always spread abundance. Peace.